G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome, everyone. Today, I'm interviewing Jill Pereira and Simon Smoltrois from The Business Pickle. They're both based in Melbourne, Australia. Thanks for your time today, guys. Thanks for having us. Howdy. Let's start with how we know each other. So, Simon, you and I recorded a cast. It took us three takes because I first time forgot to hit record, but that was just over two years ago, episode 90. Uh, went for about an hour, over an hour, I think, one of our longest at the time because you and I really hit it off. And as I said to Jill before we hit record, you and I could talk about business underwater. Yeah, hopefully it was useful. It was very useful. It was great. Just maybe give a quick outline of that car. So you are a co-founder of Harvey. Um, do you want to explain quickly to the audience? Yeah. Uh, so we first, with my wife, started the business called Harvey, which helps businesses who make a positive impact on the world. We help them grow. Um, and the reason for having this conversation today is the other business, which Jill is leading, uh, which I'm a co-founder in, is the business Pickle, which helps businesses who are already growing, already successful, uh, improve their impact um, and make their business better for the world. And something that stood out for me in that cast was that you said that you that Harvey only works with businesses that are really there that are making an impact, and you've got a, a wide definition of that. And that's one of the few long things that I read or either side of Christmas. I think you send it out is your impact report for the year that Harvey has made on, on the world, which I find really fascinating. I'm guessing that's the germination of how the the business people came about. Yeah, it's, um, it's an interesting thing. A lot of the people that uh, Beck, my wife, and I deal with are not in the impact space. They just run everyday businesses, like a, probably a lot of your listeners. And so they actually see our newsletter and our impact report, and they're like intrigued by this. They've never really heard about it before. They don't know these words like B Corp. They don't really get it. So like, what is this all about? This is all really cool. Can we learn some more? And we were like, well, instead of us just preaching to the, the choir and the converted who already are in that world of B Corp and whatever... Um, let's talk to the majority of people, um, which is what the pickle's about. Right. Well, Jill, do you want to tell us what the pickle business pickle does and what kind of businesses work with you? Yeah, for sure. So the business pickle began as a way to share uh, the latest research on different business topics related to creating a positive impact. So we did some deep dive studies into uh, topics relevant to businesses today and we got to chat to business leaders from around the world, producing podcasts, videos, research reports, and all sorts of things. And more recently, we've started coming alongside businesses to help them with their sustainability plans, mapping out their reporting and other um, activities to make sure that they're kind of on track to make a positive impact in the world. Yeah, oh, fantastic. That sounds like it's something that I'm hearing a lot more of and this term ESG. So maybe for the audience, maybe explain what ESG is. Yeah, for sure. So this is really a term that's gained a lot of traction in the last few years and it stands for environment, social governance. And really these are just three buckets um, to provide some structure to businesses that are thinking about the impact that they're having through their day-to-day -day operations and activities as a business. And it's a way to just group um, activities within those categories and provide some structure to reporting um, um, that's kind of standardised across businesses. Yep, great. And are there particular business sizes or industries that this is that you work with or that this is more relevant for? Yeah, it's an interesting one. It's often a question we get asked around the size of businesses that we're you know, looking to, to speak to and work with. But really, we like to think about it in terms of where businesses are at in their impact journey. So um, we really love to work with those leaders or businesses that are motivated to create some positive change. We don't want to have to convince people that this, this is important, um, but maybe they don't know quite what to do next or where to start on the journey. And so it's really um, the maturity of their impact journey is what we the lens that we think through. So we've worked with bigger businesses that have had some kind of uh, loose sustainability pillars or ideas on what they want to do, but not a lot of structure under it, through to a B Corp that um, just wanted to get um, better at their environmental sustainability. So it's quite, quite a broad scope of businesses that 
will work with and, and help at the business pickle. And do you have any case studies or examples of businesses that you've worked with? Yeah, sure. So just recently we did a piece of work with a digital agency based in Melbourne and around Australia called Portable. And they're actually the B Corp I just mentioned that um, really they have a great social impact through the work they do. But they realised when they were doing some strategic planning that their environmental impact isn't something that they'd really considered. And so we worked quite closely alongside their team to develop a set of activities and a strategy to take them through the next three to five years, um, really mapping out stage by stage what they could do to make um, more of an impact on the environment as a business. Yeah, great. And for the audience, B Corps, it's a social and environmental accreditation that started in the US. It's gaining a lot of traction here in Australia uh, and New Zealand and Europe. I've had probably 10 or 15 businesses on. We'll link through to those casts in the show notes. But, yeah, it's a, it's a great accreditation. I'm, I encourage small businesses of all sizes to have a, a look at B Corp, becoming a B Corp. What challenges do you see some businesses have around implementing sustainable practices? Yeah, it's a good question. And I think first just um, thinking about the term sustainability or business for good, there are a lot of definitions that sit within that. So for some businesses, it's simply a matter of providing quality products and services, doing well by their staff teams. But a lot of businesses are starting to think more broadly about their whole supply chain, the ethics that's involved in that, how they're sourcing materials, the um, carbon footprint of their products or the the internet kind of um, based things that they're creating. And so there's a lot that can fit into that sustainability bucket. In terms of the challenges that businesses are facing, um, something that we saw through some research that we did surveying leaders is just the competing business priorities of operating a successful business, you know, keeping your profits coming through and adding in additional activities to kind of track and improve your impact. So that competition of managing the day-to-day realities of running a business and thinking through um, all these issues of sustainability can be quite a lot Um, for businesses to take on yeah yeah i remember actually i think simon sent me that survey i I did complete that yeah 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 we got like about 140 50 people filling it out which we we were stoked with as a result um from very large to small businesses and also people across the spectrum from less progressive to more progressive the other interesting thing I, i got out of that um uh was that the a lot of people don't know if what they should focus on so okay they're going to do something is this going to make a difference um, should I choose a green energy provider or should I recycle our plastics or have a recycling bin or whatever? Among the many things, people wanted to know, if I'm going to put effort into this, it's got to make a difference. And it's really hard to, to know if it will. There's, it's not tangible and measurable as much as profitability is or finances. You know, if you spend money on something, X result should happen. Um, so that's one of the other things we're finding just by helping say with portable go out of all the stuff you could do. And there's a lot of suggestions from your team and out in the world. These ones are all nice, but they're not going to make a big difference. Do these three things and they'll make a huge difference. And that gives them sort of um, something to focus on and give attention to. Um, one, of the, one of the things that's happening in this space is that it, it currently feels like a nice to have or a good thing to do, but we are seeing some pretty significant global changes in the expectations of businesses um, so the IFRS set standards for financial reporting globally to, to be uh, legally a director of companies and how you do accounting. Um, they've set up a new thing called the ISSB, which will put uh, sustainability reporting on the balance sheet and the profit and loss statement. Um, so that might sound all like a lot of blah, blah for a small business, but banks in Australia are currently setting up systems to track the impact of their customers uh, because they are a stakeholder of Australia's you know, of, of their banks. So if you have a loan with a bank, they will start to track information about you, whether it's your carbon emissions, your ethics, your standards, and it's going to increase significantly to a point that this is just going to have to become a standard. Um, we're also seeing it in government, large businesses that are now demanding and preferring businesses that have better practices. So it's sort of at the moment, it's in this nice space and you can be cool and thank you in Patagonia, but it's starting to become a, a bit of a, a Um, you have to do it to play and, um, yeah, get revenue. Yeah, fantastic. And what are some practical things small businesses can do around ESG? Yeah, Uh, look, there's a lot that can be done, but I think just as a first step um, 
for a business that is maybe at the start of this journey is just to try and see where they are and what information they already have of activities in the business. So is it a matter of what waste are we creating in our business? Are we tracking that um, as to what activities are happening already? Is there a way that we can think about um, the carbon footprint of our staff teams who might be working remotely, but they're still creating um, emissions just through through their work days. So I think just getting a clear map of where you are currently and where the gaps are, because there's probably a lot that you don't know. Um, and then I think finding a framework that can help you. So just on the topic of ESG, there are lots of different reporting frameworks. We've talked about B Corp and they've got some free assessment tools to help businesses think about a lot of these different topics and provide some structure. So I think you don't need to reinvent the wheel. There is so much out there and looking towards what's already happening in your industry or um, kind of what best practices exist already is a really good space to start. So do some research, talk to people in your network and find out what's already out there. Something I've, found quite interesting coming up uh talking with business owners in the manufacturing space or you know their their supply chain is heavy with getting products made particularly over in china when we're talking about b corps they they don't even consider going for a b corp accreditation because they think that their industry is so dirty so to speak that they wouldn't be able to really make any impact or do anything you know have you come across that misconception i guess yeah, I think there is. there can be some fear um, around if we kind of peel back this layer, what are we going to find? And is that something that we want to have to deal with as a business? Um, and then there's also the fear of like, what if we make some claims about our ethics and then it turns out that there's something we weren't aware of? Um, but I think just starting on that journey and um, like not being afraid to ask your supplier if they've got any checks and balances in place and then who their suppliers are and just see if you can thread back as far as you can through your supply chain and, and again, see where the gaps are and see what information you might be able to get is a really good starting point. Um, Simon, you might have something to add. Yeah, to add to that, I think um, when you look at even businesses like, say, Patagonia or Thank You or other many names that you've known, um, they're very open and honest about the flaws in their business. Um, so Daniel Flynn from Thank You has very openly talked about how he hates the fact that their water is sold in plastic bottles, hence the they didn't stop it, but they had to run it for many years to be profitable and et cetera. Patagonia, well, do they do lots of cool stuff globally. They still have to move products all around the world. They still have to get stuff made in places that have to be made in certain things. So the way we look at it is if you're in business, you're using a computer, you're using a phone, you're using a car, many other things. None of those things are made ethically. They're made from cobalt mines that are dodgy. So if you go for perfection, you can't do anything. So just do something, be honest and try to move forward. I think like what Jill just said about asking your supply chain, that can have a pretty significant impact. Um, if a few businesses ask their supply chain um, what they're doing in these areas, that might actually lead those businesses to switch their practices more broadly and have a cascading effect down the line. So um, so yeah, don't be, be comfortable to just sort of look into the space and don't seek perfection. Um, it was also sort of stated by, we had a panel event recently with a few leaders in this space talking about um, how, to, how to do good. Find it hard to define a clear strategy, then communicate it and execute it alongside the rest of your team? Or you currently don't work, a simple quarterly strategic plan to boost your team's performance? Our Business Growth Formula online course is perfect for small business owners with 5 to 30 team members wanting to grow. We share the mindsets, habits and tools to be a legendary leader in your business. GrowSmallBusiness.com And one of them talked, one of the questions that Jill asked the panel was around, how do you talk publicly about this stuff? And, and that can be to your staff or to, to customers and social and whatever. Um, they basically made it very clear that it's important to acknowledge where you're at just and don't be fuzzy and don't sugarcoat it. Just say, this is how it currently is and we would like to get it to here. And we're going to share with you how we go on that journey. By doing that, you kind of take all the steam and heat or potential out of it being a risky or dangerous issue or like, you know, pub publicity issue because you just laid the facts out there. You've owned it and you go, we're going to work on it. Now, if you don't do anything and you do really bad stuff, well, that's, you know, that's different. If you're a big mining company um, blowing up certain sites, whatever. But if you're genuinely trying to improve stuff, um, yeah, you'll be all right. And 
Um, and be, yeah, being very specific. So instead of saying we're going to solve global warming, which is of course not, but if you're saying we're going to change the way we treat our water from this to this, or we chat, we're going to get our supplier to use this material instead of that material, it's a tiny piece in the scheme of things, but your customers, your stakeholders, your staff will really appreciate it. Mm, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yeah. Can you talk to, about the impact of businesses giving or donating? Yeah, so we did a piece of research on this topic of giving. So uh, billions of, uh, of dollars every year are given from the corporate world to charities and the nonprofit sector. And so we were curious to understand, like, how do you translate all of those dollars to genuine impact? Um, because there are some big numbers in this space, but there's also some massive issues in the world that these um, nonprofits are trying to solve and trying to plug the gaps um, on a bunch of different topics from environmental to social and everything in between. And so in this research, we found that um, about one in five impact projects encounter roadblocks to be successful. And in those cases where there were roadblocks, close to half of those roadblocks were caused by funders. And when we dug a little bit deeper and chatted to some leaders working in this space, we found out that the way that businesses give can either hinder or enable impact from happening. So if a business um, says is very um, specific in terms of how they want every dollar spent, which might not line up with what's going to be most impactful for that charity um, to do on the ground, that can be a problem. There can be differences in um, expectations around reporting and case studies and all sorts of things that can create some challenges. And so, yeah, what we found in the research is being able to identify a charity partner that is really closely aligned with the values you have as a business and developing a long-term um, open kind of uh, working relationship where there's clear communication and understanding of where the um, yeah, where that charity can create the most good is really powerful. Um, so that's something we encourage businesses to do. And we've created a toolkit to help them on that journey of finding a nonprofit partner that's a really good fit, which is freely available on our website. Great. Yeah, we'll link, link through to your website in the show notes. To, to finish up today, what is at least one thing you'd recommend a small business owner? Sorry. Uh, a small business owner does on Monday based on your experience on this topic? Uh, yeah, I think the point that we we uh, talked about earlier, progress is better than perfection. And maybe it's just starting a conversation with your team to say, look, we haven't done a lot on this space of understanding our impact. Let's start something. And so it might be creating a little working group in your team to start doing some of that research, having those conversations. Just start where you're at. Start small with what you've got kind of accessible to you and build from there. Great. And I'm, I'm guessing you'll have some good resources on your website, thebusinesspickle.com, that we can link through to on the show notes too for businesses. For sure. There's podcasts, reports, videos, and other toolkits that are free to download and use. And we really want to help businesses on this journey. So feel free to dig in there. Well, thank you, Jill and Simon, both for your time today. I've really enjoyed our chat. We'll link through in the show notes to the website and uh, really appreciate your time. It's great to chat. Thanks so much. Yeah. Good to see you. And for our audience, we'd greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc. So more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us. 